and uh, then it is the party and the winner ceremony. That's what we're looking for, and for the last games, and for this game coming up now. It's uh, also excited. We have the, like Lorena, uh, 74, Connecticut, Marcos from the USA in blue, against Helvetia from Switzerland, and white in the last game of the day, two Champions Cup 2031 uh, in Berlin. So, I'm just reading the team list of Helvetia. Uh, number five is Cecil Merkel, number six is Andrea Udalo, number seven is Helena Hay, number nine is Irene Kaiser, number ten is Judith oh. Buchli, and we are right in the game. We game already started. started. We were still good in our schedule. And, uh, oh, this is the wrong camera. We are moving in uh, to the, uh, oh, 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 sorry, Helvetia basket on the left. The Marcos are in ball possession in the corner trying to establish their attack pattern, but uh, the forechecking, we saw that from Heliots here before, is quite uh, intense. Um, looks like the teams are tired because they are uh, tackling up to the surface, always a sign of tiredness um, if uh, the ball is brought up to the surface in the tackle. And now we have Heliots here trying to put pressure on the US basket, but yet none of them have reached the other one's basket. Yeah, um, game 44, streaming live from Tempelhof Stadtbad uh, in Berlin. Uh, here oh. with Wolf, everybody's watching in white. Savita, team from Switzerland. We're right now on a construction back again. Uh, in blues, playing Makers from the United States. There are some really young players here. Or, um, some of them are only 14, a young team. And Helvetia is uh, brought together from all over Switzerland. Some are training in Lucerna, uh, Lucerne. Um, some are from Basel. Another cluster on the surface and a call from the referee. Like I said, clusters are uh, either if you are uh, the, um, the team trying to cope with a stronger team uh, as your opponent to try to tackle up to the surface, or both teams are tired, so you go up to the surface in a tackle. Helvetia now in white. Um, trying to push into the half of uh, the Marcos and we are at the US basket. Player comes from above trying to pull away the goalkeeper on her uh, leg. Didn't succeed, tackled away on the surface again. And he waits in ball position call from the referee. Don't see the sign, don't know what happened. That's a penalty. Penalty, shoulder in the basket. Uh, we are uh, at least two minutes in the first half, yes. it's about ten minutes. So it's a really tight game, so we have like nine, uh, eight o'clock in the evening, 80, uh, 53, so almost nine o'clock in the evening here in Berlin, Germany. Um, who's watching? Like 22 people uh, send us a big hug. Uh, that's the first penalty for uh, Helvetia. It's really exciting. Let's see who shoots and who... Today. So it's number 14. It's Simi um, attacking here. She's quite an experienced player playing in Switzerland with Basel and sometimes training also always. Against like number it. 6, Samantha Hernandez. Really good scoring for Simi. Very fast, very yes. decisive. Uh, so... Uh, Looks <laughs> like uh, they practiced uh, the penalty shooting. Yeah, we were practicing. She's training with my team, actually. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay, so you know her. Okay, it's a 1-0 now um, for the Swiss team in white here in the last game of day number two of the Champions Cup 2019 in Berlin. And uh, the Macos in blue are in ball possession, trying to work their way into the half of Hevizia. We have two Marco players now coming from the close side, stopped by the forechecking defense of Hevizia and brought up to the surface again. I actually don't mm. like that surface playing much. I don't no. participate in it. Normally I leave uh, the player with the ball there and wait to intercept the pass. Don't like these uh, clusters on the surface. Um, and they're really tiring and yes, physical also. as well. Yes, also. Slows the, the game down and it's tiring. Very nice interception here by a Swiss player. Helena. Pushing forward into the Marco half. Undisturbed until, wow, it's a two-on-one situation for and a second. That could be a chance. Yes! That's a goal! Good. 
Very well done. Congratulations here to the Swiss player. Kamara Cavalti uh, scores really nice. No hesitation. That that's the point. You only yeah. have a split of a second. You see to the trainer and you see some players of Zurich helping the girls. So uh, there's not really a rival club here in Switzerland. So we have another cluster playing from Makos. Makos is in ball possession getting in the close corner of Helvetian basket, trying to get there and there was nicely positioned around the basket when the Mako players but a little bit far away the ball drops uh, Mako still in ball possession trying to get in here as well but there we have a strong defender here from Helvetian team uh, but Mako are really doing a good job here trying to attack in waves uh, helping each other and we see uh, Switzerland now in ball possession, stealing away the ball from the attackers, from Makos, and now swimming towards the middle line. Yes, and again we see the same situation. The Makos are uh, earlier at their basket, but nevertheless they swim undisturbed to hold the whole of the, that was of the pool. Close one. And that was another close one, because the, the defense was in place, but the attacks from the Swiss are very decisive. And uh, they they are not stopped uh, by forechecking in the middle of the pool. This does not give the defense time to establish themselves in their part. Here we go. Same for the Marcos. Now they break into the perimeter of the defense of the Swiss. Oh, oh that could have been a chance. There was yeah, a the defender was missing. Yep, uh, there was a huge gap uh, between the change of the goalies, but the Swiss players. Uh, rescued the ball out of this uh, attack and are trying now to break into the half of the Marcos but we have a cluster on the surface and it looks like yeah ball is falling down uh, saved almost by ah, two three Swiss players are uh, saving Miriam it but now we have Pocek in the middle of the pool no yeah but now we get to the uh, make a basket again they establish a good defense the players are there um, here it is coming from the cross corner that means in on the water rugby the wall side for everybody who's watching and that was mm. a nice chance but the Mako goalie made it there in time and now checking forward and hold I guess there was a holding without the ball yeah, yeah. against the uh, Swiss holding without the ball at the free throw for Mako's here still burning keeping from the referees, let's see what they talk. Hello, uh, there. Time out for Helvetia. Yes. So, what's your estimation for this game? Uh, it looks like, at least to me, um, the Marcos are less experienced in this game. Yes, I think um, even they have a quite young team. Makers, uh, what I heard, they have like two or three players. They are 14 years old. Um, and I think they're also playing in, in Connecticut, so there's no no much com com challenge challenge there. And um, then you have Helvetia, and they're trying to search every uh, opportunity to play. They have the Lecker League Cup where they can challenge uh, and try themselves out. And they're even training in Basel and Freiburg, where I um, play as well. Um, so they really training two to three times a week really getting there so I think right now we have a good game for both of them so Mako's can try their defense try to learn because we saw them create attacks from Mako as well now we're back in the game um, oh there's almost a stolen basket from one of the Mako players here at the Helvetian basket um, but right now we're more in the middle of the pool struggling a uh, ball possession ball possession is Mako she's going into the corner at the close side of the Helvetian basket drops, but recovered, and that's a referee call. We don't know a holding without the ball, and that results in a free throw for Mako. That's what we've seen. Quite no, it's a wow penalty. No, that's I guess that's wrong from the sign. It's a free throw. It's not a penalty. Um, yeah, we have the wrong uh, uh, time now. So they're playing for that's a close one. So we're playing actually for now it's stopped. Now we don't have time running. I don't now we have time running. Yes, okay. So Marcos are in ball possession around the Hevetian basket 
and uh, trying their establish their presence around under the basket but they don't succeed tackled up to the surface again Marcus Play waiting under the cluster but it seems like they don't succeed in breaking free and the cluster is pushed in the direction of the Marco basket out of the danger zone above the Swiss one but uh, Marco is in ball possession coming down now with two players going in too high above not under the defender into the defender and uh, so the Swiss defense succeeds in pulling them up to the surface again and again the Marcos should go down deeper again a little bit too high not easy to score when you don't come from above but in the level of the goalkeeper to score from this leverage yes and we have here one and a half minutes uh, to go in the first half of game 44 last game of day two of Champions Cup 2019 here in Berlin we have so far 34 people watching our game and um, we have equally equalized uh, teams here but um, Helvetia took some more chances to uh, push through and they even had a penalty shootout and right now we are trying to uh, we're seeing Mako trying to manage to get deeper to do their attacks at the goal a little bit from more from the bottom than from uh, the top and we have a scrum on the surface which as Wolf said is always a sign of tiredness here um, it's and uh, there are too many people involved there, in this, yeah. in this uh, cluster up there it, it's, it's like uh, good for nothing uh, because it, it tires you down and you don't have uh, an advantage if you have uh, six people uh, in the cluster on the surface uh, that was ref recall it looks like a free throw for Helvetia uh, committed by some fault it's what's that sign for pulling uh, pulling, pushing, wrapping, pushing. Um, so they're executing right now the free throw, playing nicely in the corner of the close set. Close set always means that there's no uh, change play, uh, flying change of players. And here. end of the first half. Yes. So um, let's pay a little bit of attention to the persons on the tech. We have as well some persons cheering for Mako. So actually, I think there are some Spanish players. Uh, vamos Mecos uh, dicen, entonces teníamos un partido super tenso. Um, allí uh, dos goles, dos goles de uh, Helvetia so far, uh, un penalti, um, y, pero Mecos están atacando también super bien en olas, pero tienen que jugar un poco más en el fondo. Tenemos muchos jump balls. Uh, in the superficie y eso fue el primer partido. Y Colombo is asking um, that have is formed of different city. Yes, this is because there are not so many clubs in Switzerland and less women playing. So that's why they also didn't attend to the World Championship this year because it's really hard for them getting a team together. And it's the first time in a long time there have been 14 women. Um, for example, last year they participated with eight or nine players, if I don't remember wrongly. Um, but they really try to get the experience to play. Okay, we're just showing off our t-shirts. Yeah, we show our t-shirts. So another thought I had, uh, Annika, imagine you've been 14 years old participating in the Champions Cup. Imagine the whole career of underwater rugby is still ahead of you. Imagine you're 20 and you say, yeah, six years ago I had my first participation in the Champions Cup. That's amazing. I would love, to, but well, I started playing with 35, so... Uh, <laughs> ah, what? Really? Yes. Okay. I started playing with 22. Okay. That's also quite late and that's what everybody tells me. But imagine... Uh, um, it's, it's awesome to, to start at such a young age. Yes. You, you're dedicated, you have a team sports, you, you're learning some team um, characteristics. And then, you, and then really you can improve so much. You're just getting into the technique of swimming, uh, dolphins, to swim with fins. Um, and it would be awesome to be right now 14 and then uh, when you're 20 saying hello. I played when I was 14 in Champions League. I started uh, my training, my youth team, uh, they had the age of 12, uh, 12 and they are now 18 and 19 
and it's amazing how their brains are wired to underwater rugby. You explain something to them, they just do it, and it's it's really they are playing league now with my team, and it's uh, I just love it uh, the way they grew up with underwater rugby and to think in three dimensions. It's uh, it's totally different to players who started later who have to work hard to get into this game but for them starting with 12 it's uh, it's another kind of piece so five seconds left and we're back uh, in the game it's the second half in the last half of the day here champions cup uh, second day 2019 marcos are in ball position call from the referee holding or was it out of uh, holding yes holding without ball free throw against Hevitia. Marco is getting a position around the Vatian basket. Some strong defense here as well. Experienced players. Mako is getting ready for the... Oh, we have a... There's one player out that have a... We have a two minute penalty. We haven't seen it. Oops. He just appeared on totally the Totally missed it. Um, So we have a strong attack from Mako here, almost getting in there, but the goalie got in on time, trying to uh, score here. Havitzer is undermanned by, or undermanned by one player, so they're five in the water actually, and one on the substitution bench. Sadly, we don't know what happened uh, because we don't have a direct connection to the referees around the pool. But so far, Helvetia is doing a good job keeping yes. the uh, Marco players away from their dangerous zone under the basket. And Helvetia is defending heavily. They're uh, like uh, back uh, around their basket in uh, numbers. But this is no defense now under the basket. We have three Marco players under the Helvetian basket. They're pushing hard into the defense under the goalie. Call from the referee. Guess it was holding call from the deck referee penalty again shoulder in the penalty. basket probably it's a make or penalty this time so i think it will be interesting if it can turn the game and if it can turn some of the mentality of uh, some make players so let's see who defends and who shoots We have here in, in the picture Urus, one of the sh referees from Colombia. Get him reading here, stack roughly. We have forward clock. Here we go, starts. Uh, oh, this. Okay, this is number 14. That's Simi uh, defending, and. And the attacker is uh, number one. Oh, the goalkeeper ball is dropping down. What happened? She wasn't allowed to go that far away. She's down again. Well done. And she's not allowed to fight anymore. Nope. Uh, she's that fall playing. She was too far away from her own goal. So uh, goalkeeper is out. And uh, that should be a repetition with another goalkeeper. Uh, the Marcos change uh, their uh, attacker too. So Simi apparently is on the bench. We have an... And oh. again, repetition of, of the penalty. penalty. And here we go. Let's see, we have... Marco number player is Isa. number eight. Daniela Bedoya. And for defending, we have number 81, that's Isa Monstern. She relaxes now because she knows yeah. uh, the attack is coming. And from above, trying to push oh, directly over close. Ahead. Close. Now under the basket, well really done by the goalkeeper. And up and down the basket. Nice, and nicely defended. So there are 15 up again. seconds left. Now the attacker has to hurry up, coming from above over the head. That's a good chance, but I guess the... Oh, no! Wow! And that was close, five goal. seconds. Very well defended by the Hevertian player, but in the last second she was too far away from the basket. That also could 
changes the mentality of the game. So Mako's got a real yep. opportunity here. Um, they to saw they up. can score, and it could be a uh, trying out or tension playing is out. rising. Do you feel it? Yes, totally. <laughs> last game, the last, uh, the the pen penultimo uh, game was also really exciting, and now we have another exciting game. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, singing is not required as a commentator, but it's always nice to do so. And uh, looks like w what? the referee is talking to the Helvetian team, and there's a Mako player there as well outside. We haven't got the hint of what was happening when they're outside at the... Was it a timeout without uh, realizing, or was there a blackout of a player? Are they looking at a player there? I don't see it. No, it looks fine so far. No, there's there's the medical attending somebody. Just the boyfriend of uh, number six is peeing in the way to see it, but maybe it's a good thing to not show it. We had. A discussion here. So we still have a medical timeout, so that's why we don't see here anything. Um, let's just wait. I think always penalties are tough for the defending as for the attacking. The defending has to stay down there. Defending, uh, he has a two meter radius um, to defend. He doesn't. Uh, he he isn't allowed to leave the two meter um, zone. And then we have um, the attacking person and he's allowed or she's allowed to go up, breathe and go down again but it's also really challenging because um, if you s see the diving meters like if you dive down 3 meters 80 or 4 meters and have to dive 4 meters up again and are really intense, your pulse is high when you're doing a penalty yeah, so you, you say for the goalie or uh, for both for both yeah but i never actually i wanted to talk about that too i never ever saw a goalie succeeding and going up and going down again without catching the goal yes. never no. in my own career in the games and in the live streams whenever the goalie went up to take a breath there was a score because it's always easier for the goal carrier for the bowl carrier to go down in the last second and to be faster and throw the ball yes so lorena got in just to help and for more support. We don't really see what's happening. It looks like uh, uh, they uh, have the player. It is the Marco player. No, yeah. I can't see who plays yeah, it looks like a Marco player. Because the Marcos are uh, standing around and uh, looking. It could be a, a, a short blackout because of the stress and the uh, high blood pressure, high uh, um, adrenaline. And yeah, performance and you just like go up and it's and and since uh, you you didn't manage it's just like it, it, it overwhelms you. Yes. So that happened many times. And sometimes if the player go up too fast they just uh, drop back in the water, had that too in a tournament after yes. a penalty. Didn't happen to me but I saw it. So we got information from Lorena. No. But we hear the applause. So as Lorena told us, uh, there was a blackout from uh, the macro player, from the attacker. And the... Uh, but she's good again, we have the applause from the whole teams. So we should continue with the game. And the last, uh, how many minutes? Uh, I don't really remember. No, still no continuation for the game. Some sign language is here to pass the water bottle almost. Get there. Really nice team play here. Sportmanships from both teams trying to give water. Always not forget to 
Tomorrow morning we start at um, 8 o'clock and the first game will be an interesting one uh, just to give you an uh, overview for tomorrow it's Malch against Molde at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning Sunday on the third day of the Champions Cup 2019 so it's uh, one important game for the men's final already because this will decide who will face uh, the Colombians uh, in the final, the semi-final or the final I think is it the semi-final for the men? I'm uh, so bad with schedules I'm over asked over asked. I'm over asked. Ich bin Can you be under asked? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> so we're still waiting for uh, the player to yeah, number eight. Number eight. Uh, yes, uh, Daniela Bedoya, who was attacking in this penalty shooting. Um, She's shaken, like Lorena said, a little bit. Uh, it, it's the adrenaline and uh, the, the not uh, scoring sometimes can be overwhelming together with the exhaustion of the day. And these teams, these players are still in jet lag. You know, they still haven't recovered from the, from the traveling from the US, from Australia, from uh, Colombia. So this, the, the strain for the body is really high. And to be in an uh, emotional, depleting situation like this could be really exhausting. So there has been the separations of the team. We haven't asked the player uh, or the guy in front of the camera to move because uh, we don't want to show scenes like this uh, on live TV. It's much more, much more respectful to just um, tell it but not show it. We don't we, because we didn't. We were in the work quite long time. What was happening and now Robert Clock, the deck referee, is. Here we go, back again. again. Six minutes left in the second half, so six minutes here on day two in the last game. And uh, Helvitia was in ball possession, but tackled on the surface. And we have a cluster for the start in the last six minutes. So we have 30 seconds left, so we have Helvitia still <coughs> underplayed. They're missing one player who's sitting at the bench for another 20 seconds. Um, almost five and a half minutes to go here in this last game of the day. We are right now in the corner of the close side of the Mako basket. We had a short um, medical timeout and right now we are... But nothing serious, the player is good seriously. again. We're all we're fine, all don't fine. worry. A uh, really totally important normal. tip of both teams and now they're playing really good. Oh, dangerous oh. situation here in front of the Marco basket. The basket was empty and the ball was falling down and almost uh, the Swiss player recovered the ball and could swim uh, in direction. Uh, she was only like two and a half meters away from the Marco basket, but she didn't succeed and tackle again on the surface. Less than five minutes left here in the second half. Marco's in blue from the US against Helvetia and white from Switzerland and Helvetia is leading with the two to one the uh, goal difference in this game. So the Michael Bayer um, gets to the Hervetian basket trying to attack, establish, set up an attack of waves of players. They're nicely positioned around the basket, stealing the position, trying to make a block. That's a really good chance, but they're right down there, too far up. Just a little, uh, just a few centimeters, but it's too high to start an attack on the goalie. Yep, agreed. Either you come really from above, like uh, over the head, or you come from really down under the basket. But this half level, I saw the Colombians do it with the, the comp, when they just push the shoulder and squeeze in the, the ball. That's a technique they developed. But normally, uh, if you don't uh, exercise that, uh, at least thousands of times you cannot succeed and like this uh, what we saw from Hevetian and the Marcos here they will not succeed. So Hevetian in ball possession coming from the close side the corner into the Marco basket trying to get in there from above and uh, get a cluster to the surface three and a half minutes left. So we're still at the cluster of the Mako basket um, the white players really got into the games here at Champions Cup, they're helping each other much more, trying to uh, place Denis under the scrum at the surface, which they did, the ball shot, they could manage to um, swim and set up an attack, but were tackled away by some Mako players. 
Uh, right now, again going down, and oh. that's a good chance on pushing here, that's a good oh. technique, but there was missing some physical power here. Now the the, the gold strip, but we have ball possession of Makos here, two white players on uh, right there to steal the possession of the ball again. What would be uh, really uh, uh, exhausting for both teams now uh, if... Uh Marcos equalize and we have to go into penalty shooting as much as I uh, would wish for the Marcos to have a chance here uh, with equalizing and to win through penalties. Um, on the other side, it would be like uh, devastating for both teams physically, physiologically uh, to <laughs> sustain a penalty shooting uh, at the end of the day here yes. at Champions Cup uh, day number two. So we have two, roughly two minutes left of the game, 52 people watching. So in white there are Helvetia and in blue Makos who are attacking the Helvetia in basket here, um, trying to set up a wave of attack. But Helvetia is getting really into defending really well and one of the Mako players just put the ball a little bit too far out here to uh, relax. Um, so the Helvetia team could relax a little bit at the defense. Now we're in the middle of the pool. I think there's a scrum at the surface which we can't see because of the cameras. Now we see it and we move back to the right side to the Helvetian basket here. I think in the last one and a half minutes, um, Makos after their penalty goal, they really want to get in there, do another goal and go to penalty shootouts, right? Yep. Yep, that's what I think too. And uh, Switzerland, uh, time is working on their side, so they if they keep the ball in the cluster, or at least away from their own basket. Um, there, it's their game. One minute left here, the last game. And we have a cluster on the surface. Time is ticking less than a minute. Defense of Marcos is going up. Dangerous situation. I think they really want to, to buy time or maybe to kill time. I would do the same. I would just hold on to the ball uh, because it's uh, less exhausting. Uh, just keeping the ball then having to risk another goal and going into penalties. Half a minute left. Yep. Yes, that's what we see. But now the Helvetian players try to push the cluster above the Marco basket. If the ball drops down in this situation, this can always be a dangerous situation for the basket. Um, uh, 20 minutes left. I think number six, Andrea, is trying to hold on here. Uh, trying to free it to, to play a little bit longer, but 10, ten seconds. seconds left. I think it will just stay in the scrum here at the surface. Um, but we see really nicely, even if the game is over in four seconds. Time stopped on our clock on the screen. It's a free throw, but time stopped. That four seconds. Happen. I think this is done for Helvetia. They did win this game. Uh, Marcos fought hard, yes. but it was in favor of Switzerland. And uh, as much as I uh, saw a good game by uh, the Marcos from the US, um, they were lacking a little bit of experience, young players. And it's always tough in these situations. Combined with the end of the day and the chat lag uh, from the US, that could have been very hard. So, thank you very much everybody for watching uh, the last game of the day. And uh, we will see you here tomorrow at 8 o'clock. And we start with uh, one of the important uh, men games here in the last round. March it's the uh, TSV March, the German champion at 8 o'clock against uh, the Norwegian champion Molde. And uh, this is going to be a decisive game. Uh, who's going to face... Uh, it will be a hot game. Yeah, it will be a hot game and face uh, maybe um, Finland or Colombia, I think. Yeah. And then it's Hazu against Orcas tomorrow as well. So it will be also an interesting big game. We have some, seen good blames from Hazu, but Orca hasn't had quite the challenge competition here. So I recommend everybody uh, already preparing a strong coffee for, uh, let's say, uh, 7.45 tomorrow morning. And then brew the coffee so you're ready in front of the screen, hearing us when you see the game uh, March against Molde, which will going to be, uh, well, probably you don't even need a coffee in the morning like that. It's going to wake you up. You will feel the adrenaline. That's your coffee. That's called underwater rugby coffee. Thank you very much, Annika, for commentating here uh, with me. Thank you for letting me skip in and uh, introducing me to commenting here.
second day for me today. Good night, world, wherever you're watching from. And uh, uh, buenas noches a Colombo. He uh, was bon nuit, gute Nacht uh, in die Welt und wir hören und sehen uns. Tomorrow. Be here at 8 o'clock sharp. A little bit further. Goodbye.